All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so how's everybody doing? Enjoying the uh, first day of Google I.O., I assume? Had some lunch? Um, so this is the Google Web Toolkit and Cloud Tooling Fireside Chat. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take an hour to converse with uh, some of the folks that work on the GWT team uh, and Cloud Tooling team. Um, so I wanted to say thank you for coming out after lunch and uh, taking your time to sit and talk with us. The, the makeup of this session is uh, it's, it's kind of open and free. We're, you know, it's a lot of Q&A. It's a chance for um, our favorite people, our users, to come and talk to us and ask questions. And um, you know, we'll provide answers and have great feedback. Um, so we will take a second in the beginning maybe to introduce ourselves to give you an idea um, just who you're talking to and, and what we're up to. Um, so my name is Chris Ramsdale. I'm the product manager for uh, Google Web Toolkit and the Google plugin for Eclipse. And I'll just pass it on down, down the line here. Bruce Johnson, uh, engineering director, Google Web Toolkit. Uh, Joel, Weber, oh, Joel, Joel Weber and I uh, started this project back in 2000, the mid-2000s-ish. Um, and then the team has grown a lot since then. Uh, my name's Una. I work on the Google Web Toolkit team as well. And uh, I work primarily on the logging emulation, and I did a lot of work with the bootstrapping linker and a little bit of re work with CSS resource and such. I'm John Tamplin. I've worked uh, on developer mode and internationalization primarily. I'm Ray Ryan. I'm also an engineer on the GWT team. I'm a tech lead of libs right now. Um, so that's uh, UI binder uh, widgets and that kind of a thing. Uh, UI binder is my biggest piece. I'm Stephanie Brubaker. Um, I work primarily on GWT libraries, most recently with UI Binder and Safe HTML. And I'm Phil Quitzland, and I work on GPE primarily, Google Plugin for Clips. I'm, I'm Jason Rosenberg, and I've been working on the compiler optimizations and development mode. My name is Jamie Wren. Um, I also work on the uh, Google plugin for Clips. <clears throat> All right, thanks for the introductions. So what I thought we would do um, is give you uh, a little bit of an update of where we've been this year and where we plan on going, looking forward the next three, four, six months. And then um, check, there's, there was a, a moderator link to with some questions that people had uh, already pre-submitted. And so we'll go through those, and then we'll mainly open up for for uh, Q&A. Um, so the, the past year has been a great one. Uh, we've, from a high level, we've, we've started to make releases for GWT and GPE uh, a bit more frequent, which is great for our users, which is great for us. It uh, gets the cycle going. And so it lets us get uh, new features and enhancements in quite fast. Um, we've started down the HTML5 path. So to now, we've gone through a. Uh, GWT 2.2 and a GWT 2.3 release, where we've had Canvas, audio, video, local storage support with an HTML5. Um, and we've started to, as you'll see in a session that I'm going to present tomorrow, um, we've started to think about app cache and how you can use that within your GWT application. So we'll talk about um, a new linker that we've started to build out that will produce manifest files for you um, automatically. So as you can see over the past year, We've, 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 we've noticed that there's a trend, obviously, with HTML5, and, and you know, we want to be part of that. And we think that the best way to program for that is using GWT, right? So we'll actually provide um, our own APIs on top of HTML5 APIs to allow you, as a GWT developer, to take advantage of you know, all of those features. Um, we've also made some um, cell table and cell widget enhancements, and we'll, t we'll continue to do that as well. And so if you, uh, if you look, about where, look at where we're going over the next few months, um, you start to see that it kind of breaks down into to three areas. Um, we're going to continue um, our focus on cell widgets and cell tables. We know that um, generally developers that want to use GWT um, are typically operating with a medium size to a large scale application. Uh, and it takes a lot to keep those large scale applications efficient and fast. But that's the number one goal for us. So um, what better way right now is to, to introduce and continue the, the motivation and the momentum with cell widgets and, and cell tables in particular to do that, given the fact that you know, a lot of these applications are kind of business focused. And um, that doesn't mean they're not sexy or sexy. That just means that they're handling a lot of data. 
uh, and to do that efficiently, like that's one, one way your application can get bogged down really fast. So we think that the investment we've made in the cell widgets thus far and we continue to make over the next three or four months is an important one. Um, so that, that's kind of you know, where we think about in terms of uh, application efficiency, but then we also are very adamant about uh, developer efficiency as well. So keep your apps running fast and keep you as a developer running fast. Um, so the, the second primary place we're looking at in terms of uh, the next three or four months is in, in testing. So uh, we, we've noticed that some internal teams as well as external teams have had some, some pain uh, when it comes to testing, uh, things like using Selenium or even GWT test case. And if you've been following along, we've, you know, we've always been trying to introduce ways to make testing faster. I think that was the, um, the motivation for the whole MVP design pattern was to steer your way of GWT, GWT test case when you needed to so you could you know, function with just vanilla JRE tests. So now we're taking that a step further and noticing that like, okay, so you've adopted this design pattern and you have an application that works quite well and you can test quite well, but then there's still that last 15, 10%, 5% if you're lucky of integration tests. And for that, you use things like Selenium to do testing and that can be kind of painful still. So we're, you know, we continue to optimize. And so we have some projects in the pipeline um, that will help with that. And then finally, again, uh, keeping with uh, the motto of efficient developers, um, we're going to come back. We are currently focusing quite a bit of effort on making development mode or dev mode faster. So <clears throat> it's nice because uh, if you look back from GWT 1.5 moving forward, we've added, added a ton, a ton of functionality. Let's just to recap. I mean, we've got UI binder now, we've got code splitting, we've got a new RPC framework, we've got an activities and places framework, we've got, and it just kind of goes on and on and on. Well, when you start pulling all of those features in, you know, it can, it can add some weight to the application, it can add some weight to the actual dev mode time. And, and, and so what we've seen is that there's some things we can do in terms of caching and smart caching to make that faster. And so we could take, for example, a dev mode time of running at 25 seconds down to, you know, something in sub, sub five. Like, that's a high level goal. I'm not saying we're there yet. I'm just saying that that's, that's the way we think right now. So those are the numbers and the metrics we're, we're, we're targeting. And so that's what's keeping us busy for the next three to four months. And again, uh, you know, the, the motivation is always efficient applications, efficient developers. And if we can have both of those, then I think we've done a good job. Um, a little forward looking <clears throat> is uh, I continue, we continue to evaluate HTML5 features that make the most sense for our developers and for our teams as well. Um, and so with Canvas, it was, um, well, let's just be honest, Canvas was a fun one. You can do a lot of cool demos with Canvas. I'll be honest about that. And, but we've also seen that there have been um, a fair number of game developers that have started adopting GWT as a, as a uh, framework for them to develop efficient applications and in games, especially. So Canvas was a smart move there. Um, audio and video tag um, for people that are incorporating sound effects and things like that, and it was a pretty easy move. Um, and that was, that was good. It was us dipping our toes into uh, some new ground for GWT because for the longest time we've always advocated that you, know, you can write once and run anywhere, you know, any browser, cross-browser, cross cross-platform. Um, but with Canvas, obviously we, we deterred from that because we're talking like there's no Canvas support in IE6 and we didn't try to backfill that with Flash or something like that. We just we kept it efficient. Um, and so we, we ended up being quite happy with the programming model to give you guys a way, our, our users a way of determining like, you know, what do you want, what, what is the fallback mechanism for when you don't have Canvas supported? So given that we, we solved that problem in the beginning of the year, it opened up the door to say, okay, now we have a nice programming model and a way to move forward with HTML5 support. And so now we're looking at things like we had with GWT 2.3, we introduced local storage. So that's a way of uh, caching uh, data uh, inside the browser's database, uh, key value pairs. Uh, and you can do it for two things. You can make your application a little more snappy because you're actually reading from disk rather than making an RPC. And then actually you can start to think about working offline. So if you drop a connection, you can just queue up an RPC, or you can queue up a read. And then with app cache, we kind of we, we, we push that a little bit further. So you're actually reading everything from disk, all of the artifacts for your application. Uh, and then forward thinking over the next four or five and even six months, we'll think about things like IndexedDB and a few other HTML5 features. And we'll, we do uh, evaluate them based on what external teams and internal teams need. And the nice thing about that is that we typically see as I talk to more and more teams, more and more external folks, we find that there is a, a, a striking parallel between the teams we talk to internally and the, things we talk, the teams we talk to externally. So that's, that's really good for us. That happens to work out quite well. So the investments we make on both sides are beneficial to, to uh, each kind of split of our, our user base. Um, and then finally, thinking a little, t little further out, um, and I'm quite passionate about this myself, uh, is mobile web apps. And we, we started off the year hot and heavy about that. We're doing some research, had some requirements down, started to formulate a little team. Um, and we, we, we 
kind of started scouting it around and talking to folks. And, and what we'd end up doing is talking about, you know, how you can make a choice. You can do native or mobile web apps and, and which, you know, where are the benefits and where are the trade-offs. And um, we backed off just a tad bit, um, just because we thought we were going to let the market evolve a little bit and let our customers evolve a little bit and see what, you know, what their actual needs are. That doesn't mean it's off the table. It just means that we're, we've we bought it back in and we're evaluating it. But the good news is that we'll continue to evaluate it over the, the next few months. And so we'll keep targeting a little longer term HTML5 and, and mobile support moving forward. Um, but the, the good news is that uh, part of the research that we did uh, proved out that <clears throat> you can take what we have now and what um, other projects have now as well, and you can build a great mobile web app that will be highly efficient and used anywhere. And um, so I have a session tomorrow morning at 10.45 after the keynote that, that talks through that and runs how to use uh, GDBT 2.4, which is what we'll be announcing this week, alongside the plugin for Eclipse and a few other things to build great mobile web apps. So that, that's, that's a little bit of a background of where we've been this year and where we're going over the next few months looking into 2012. Um, so with that, I thought I, would, um, I can jump on and see if there's any questions within, the moder within moderator, and we can open it up for just general discussion and have you guys come up and ask questions. But I actually should say, actually, is there anything else that you guys wanted to add to? All right. I think I answered one or two. I just was uh, curious about uh, what else you've done with in introducing local storage and uh, with your caching in the browser. Can you talk more about that? Yeah. I'll take it. <clears throat> so uh, the local storage is, um, um, it's, it's a pretty lightweight API over the local storage APIs right now. Um, so the support we have is, is we expose the API with type safety in term, which is what GWT has always done. Um, so we give you type safety. And we, we right now leave it up to you as the application developer to, to build you know, caching techniques on top of that. Right? So we've, uh, Ray and I have had conversations about you know, is there a way that we can actually hook up local storage to say GWT RPC or Request Factory. Uh, and that's a very enticing problem to solve. Um, but we still land in every discussion of it really makes sense to let the application developer, at least right now, to, to build on top of the APIs that we, we, that we support. So right now, it's to, to answer your question, the short answer is that we've, uh, <clears throat> we're exposing a thin wrapper on top of the local storage APIs. Hey, um, we recently started using Trunk because we wanted to implement from file drag and drop. And uh, so I'm just curious what your thoughts are on using Trunk and how stable it is. Does it pass unit tests? Um, <clears throat> Uh, the short answer is everybody at Google works from Trunk every day. Um, internally, we don't do any kind of releases. You create your own stability with a release branch, and so there is um, change by change, constant pressure on us not to break things and to maintain the quality of things. So um, I would be working from Trunk if I were working uh, I'm from outside of Google as well. Thanks. Hi. Any updates on the Google um, Earth API and the Google Map API version three, like in GWT? Yeah, that's a, so um, we've, we've been having those conversations uh, in, you know, internally about where that support will come from. Um, <clears throat> I think the onus lands back on us to update them. Um, so we, we know that it's a, it's a strong desire from, from the community and they, many people have asked your question too, and we've actually heard from internal folks, even from some internal sales, fo internal sales folks, that uh, they get this question a lot. So we, we, we definitely know that it's high priority, and we've started to identify some folks on the, on the GWT side that might be able to help out to do that. Um, I've got a question about internationalization and what the roadmap is for the future. I noticed that there was a big commit probably like two, three months ago. Could you maybe explain what the impetus was behind that and what that's going to allow me as a developer to do? 
Um, so when you say uh, big commit, can you clarify which one you're talking about? Had to do with messages. It was like phase one of something or another. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Okay, I think you're talking about uh, being able to uh, do some of the internationalization work on the server okay. and, or at build time. So uh, one of the things we want to be able to do is have uh, shared code uh, that uses the same messages. So you don't have uh, slightly different formatting between the client and server or have to have two different translations uh, for the, essentially the same messages. And so uh, what we want to allow is have, uh, you have your messages in shared code and then you, you can use those messages on either the client or the server. Uh, initially, it'll just be support for, uh, at build time, you would construct implementations for the server. Uh, eventually, and there, there are some people who have been doing it externally as well, would be able to generate bytecode on the fly uh, on the server so you didn't have to do it all at build time. Okay, thanks. One, one quick idea is if, if people wouldn't mind doing it, just say your name and where you work and um, maybe like two or three sentences about your project. I just think it'd be fun to share what, what we're working on, if you can. If you, if you don't want to, don't. I'm, a, I'm Abhi, I work for Fidelity Information Services. Um, we are banking software providers basically for nationwide and all the big banks, uh, Bank of America they use. So we're trying to introduce GWT into banks, uh, uh, some of the banks already, the front ends are based on that. One of my <coughs> struggle has been around uh, the look and feel. Most of our work goes on uh, hammering out the look and feel. And with UI Binder, it made it a little better, but we're still struggling with that. And I don't know, it'll, it'll be nice if we could have a CSS3 style, which basically default uh, makes the application look a little nicer so that we can present it to product managers because that's what they care about. Uh, they don't care, so we don't want to put in any work beforehand to make it pretty. Uh, second thing was the validation piece on the client side that uh, get, keeps getting delayed. I saw it was not checked in or released as part of 2.3. Uh, what, what is the timeline, timeline on that? And uh, do you guys, I mean, uh, intend on working on that, or will it be? And one more thing, the activity mapper with the gin. Can, can you guys work with that and probably provide a sample? Because we have like 70 or 80 activities, uh, and we cannot put that in a client factory, so. Yeah, most of that lands on me. Um, <laughs> we have, uh, we've put in some preliminary support to at least get some CSS3 syntax working properly in client bundle. Didn't, am I interpreting that right? Well. <laughs> I'll let Una address that more directly. Um, we, uh, we're hearing that internally and externally as well. Um, your second question was about client-side validation. With um, 2.4, it will at least have, um, it will be in the 2.4 release, at least with experimental status. Um, it's a lot of work, um, and it's been kind of a labor of love by one guy who does several things at once. Um, he's held it back so far because the level of compliance with the TCK, um, you know, the, the, the acceptance suite hasn't been high enough. But now it's at the point where um, teams are using it internally, um, have been for a while now, and as of 2.4, it will be included in the release jars. There will be a caveat of this is not yet fully baked, but um, it's not going to, it's a standard, so the rug isn't going to be pulled out from under you. It will simply get more and more faithful and higher and higher quality. Um, and then finally, um, the boilerplate problem with um, activities and activity manager is um, very well understood. Um, that's on my personal to-do list to um, try to do something about that this quarter. Um, at the very least, we're partway through a sample app that should make it clear um, how to use these things and how not to use these things. Um, it will probably be gin-based. If, even if it's not gin-based, it'll be um, run async and async um, um, async proxy, I forget the name of the, the interface. Um, anyway, we, we are trying to catch up with that, uh, that backlog of documentation and uh, boilerplate reduction. Um, I think that was the three, oh, Una. Yeah. Right, um, so there's two, two the, your first question was two points, look and feel in general and CSS3 in particular. Um, John Labenka made a post recently with a, um, a design proposal for a new generation of widgets. If you Google for, um, uh, use the Google search engine to look for the term um, quit widgets that rock. You'll find a very specific uh, proposal for a new generation of widgets that use an appearance pattern where um, the look and field is managed by um, a partner object that you have uh, strong control over how to customize it and how to keep that going. 
Um, as those widgets get implemented, um, John is taking advantage of CSS3 where he can um, and uh, retrograding uh, um, with, uh, with an adequate fallback path for browsers that don't provide CSS3, but we're not hamstringing ourselves by making sure that everything can render faithfully on IE6. Um, and then I'm gonna give the hot potato of uh, proper CSS3 support for client bundle to Una. Uh, okay, um, there is not, sorry. Um, I don't believe there's full CSS3 support for client bundle slated. There may be, but I'm not working on it right now. Um, the one thing we did add was that you can, it'll parse the double colon selectors. So it's a very small thing first, but if you were trying to use, you know, colon colon dash webkit radius or something, that will now work. Um, yeah, you can work around a lot of stuff using literal, but you could you could do that before. So, sorry. Is that one other thing was the printing with cell tables. If you guys can add samples, because that's a common requirement we face as well. Um, the question there was um, uh, getting better support for printing with cell tables, and um, I will talk to the guy most likely to make that to happen. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Chris Jones. I work for InfoGroup Interactive, um, and I've been lovingly using GWT for a long time on um, an email uh, campaign management uh, product. Um, in, in our uh, development workflow, uh, we have a lot of different needs for uh, speed and uh, fast iterations, um, some of which work well with the, um, with the dev mode model um, and some, some don't. Um, so I'm wondering if, uh, what kind of items are on the roadmap to improve and cache not only the dev mode experience, but also the uh, straight up compiler experience. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's not always an issue to make dev mode as snappy as possible and still allow you to uh, set breakpoints and debug and have an interactive development experience. Um, so we've, we, we've definitely been work, focusing on that in the last quarter and we'll continue in the next quarter on dev mode performance. And so we are uh, working on some enhancements that will be coming soon. Um, I can't really talk about all the details of, of what we're doing, but one big thing will be caching previously generated results so you don't have to keep regenerating things uh, repeatedly. So watch this space. Yeah, and the, 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 to add to that, the <clears throat> some of the progress that we have made is um, actually being able to, to pick apart you know, what actually makes dev mode slow. So to me, who tries to replicate what an external would, user would feel, um, it just looks like it takes a long time. <laughs> but, um, but Jason and a few others on the team have done a great job of picking apart that and saying, well, you know, here's really where you're spending most of your time or where your dev mode is spending most of his time, its time. And um, it's been pretty eye-opening. You know, we've, we've definitely found, and it gives us, it's great because it gives us like the bang for our buck type of, type of move. So I can definitely say that uh, some of the caching enhancements and the, to be a little more specific, we've, you know, we're looking at things like um, code generators running all the time, right? Which is something that we've added a lot to, like Ray and Bob and various other people. That the magic, kind of some of the magic about GWT, if you want to call it that, is the ability to run code generators behind the scenes to do a lot of the boilerplate that you don't need to write. Well, running those every time can be a little more, a little inefficient. It gives you a great experience because you can always get your app up to date. But if you're running them all the time, you're running 25 of them, just throwing a number out there. <clears throat> That can get a little timely. So they have looked into uh, one of the ways of caching is, you know, obviously if we're, if you're generating code and that code has not changed, you should cache it. And if you can read it from disk, it becomes very fast. So that's kind of where our mind is right now. And um, I think we are actively trying to get those into um, the 2.4 final release. So to give you, I, I didn't mention this in the beginning, the 2.4 two release that we're talking about tomorrow is gonna be a beta release. Um, and then we're looking to do uh, uh, an RC and a final release with, you know, two, three weeks everywhere in between. So that's the timing we're talking about. So yeah, I've been talking to Jason and Eric and a few other folks about what we can do to get that in there. So yeah, keep an eye on it and we'll definitely have some updates. Are there any plans to bring that, those types of optimizations into the compiler? Jason, do you wanna say something about that? Um, yeah, yes, yeah, so uh, speeding up the compiler process as well as, is, is a part of that. Um, it may not be quite as dramatic as the improvements we've seen with dev mode, but uh, we definitely have uh, some targeted ideas about the, the compiler as well that we've 
So we, we, we've picked a couple of um, internal apps that are just massive apps, and, uh, and so those are pretty good. They really stress the system a lot, and Jason and those, the guys he's working with um, are, are actually doing something. I want to plug Speed Tracer too, just real quick. If you guys have not seen Speed Tracer, actually, would you mind raising your hand if you have heard of Speed Tracer before? Okay, good. Okay, good, good, good. So um, that might be useful. You work on, is it YesMail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it still called YesMail? Okay. Yeah, good. Switch names, but yeah. okay, okay, cool. So, so um, if you if you haven't, Speed Tracer is great for that. And what Jason and uh, Toby and Eric did was they basically did it. Was it a separate build of Speed Tracer? Yeah. So we uh, found a new way to use Speed Tracer just to monitor the dev mode and compiler uh, process internally. So we instrumented the internal GWT code to uh, generate a Speed Tracer output file that we can then visualize, and it's really been eye openings, uh, we've been able to see where the, where the slow points are in the process and really target those. And uh, we're and happy with it, what, where we're It's headed. so cool because, you know, normally with Speed Tracer, you see a graph of where things get slow and then you see the event list of what all happens. Imagine the same thing except what you're seeing is what is happening inside dev mode or what is happening inside the compiler. So it's not actually about the app running, it's about the app, the tools themselves running. And so we, we jokingly call it Tool Tracer, but it just reminded me, though, that maybe we should make it somehow available if it's not already, so that Chris, you, you know, instead of trying to describe in this format, like, what's going on, if you could just send a, a dump of, of what you just experienced. Yeah, absolutely. And other people did the same, we could see, maybe see patterns. I don't want to set expectations too high on, you know, whether we'll be able to prioritize that, but it would certainly add a lot of, you know, detail to, so that we can do our best to make it better for you. Yeah, you, you can come talk to me afterward. I can try to help you with that. Cool. Uh, hi, my name is Stephen Haberman. I work for Bizzo. Um, we do online advertising. And um, yeah, so, so the new cell widgets uh, sound all sorts of really cool. Uh, cell table is also really nice, and, and I get why the, the perf benefits are great. But they're kind of not really fun to use, um, and, and I think could be much more so if, if, if I've heard rumors of, of UI binder support for cell. Uh, stuff, which I think would be terribly awesome and, and make my life much easier. Um, do you have any comments on that? Stephanie? Uh, yes, we would like to add cell table support to UI binder. Um, it's, we'd like to have more engineers too, but that's, <laughs> that, that, is on, that is on the short list of very next things. Um, in the meantime, though, if you look at GWT Designer, it already has tremendous support for cell table. Um, it's now, so GWT Designer is now included in the Google plugin for Eclipse, and um, it gives you this nice little canvas where you can drag out your table and drop columns onto it and specify if it's this column or that column or the other column, and it'll just get all of that code laid out for you in the first place. So um, in the meantime, please do look at that. Hi, my name is Stephen Cohen. I work for In Resonance. We do uh, software for independent and private schools. and. First thing I want to do is want to thank the GWT team because um, two years ago, three years ago, my boss had me evaluating tools and I showed him a couple of early videos, you know, back in the one four days and that's the reason why we've converted everything we're doing web facing to GWT and we're still in the process of migrating some of our back end from an old lamp to, you know, to, but my, so I want to thank you all because you've made my life and managing that flow with the other developers I work with so much easier. Got two questions. Uh, one is about Java util date. Yeah, I figured it would get a laugh. Um, just to sum it up for anyone who doesn't know, because there's so much chatter out there on what's the, what's the best thing to do. Currently, uh, you're using deprecated code, deprecated calls if you want to access that, and everybody's got their own opinion, but I would love to hear something definitive from, from, from you all. The other thing is about dev mode uh, in Chrome on the Mac. Uh, again, um, I, I, and it's gotten so much better, you know, uh, it still will time out here and there, and what I'm interested in, in I'm interested in having a better understanding of why. Um, as opposed to when will this be fixed. But I'd really like to have a deeper understanding of, of what's different, and that might actually be something that's more appropriate to ask to the Chrome team than here, since it looks like it's an issue with how Chrome works with it. But I would love to hear anything that you have to add. 
Okay, so uh, about Java Util Date, uh, the main problem is that uh, the, the replacement in the JDK calendar uh, still has some limitations and uh, the infrastructure simply isn't there in the browser to, pro to provide all the functionality. So we would have to uh, basically download a whole bunch of extra code and data to emulate calendar. Uh, the, what most people are using is Jota time, uh, and there's a GWT emulation uh, part of that. Uh, there's been some request internally to uh, basically support Jota time uh, built into GWT, but there, that complicates things uh, you know, with an external project trying to keep uh, up to date in GWT and in the external project. So uh, my guess is, uh, and, and I've also heard that they're uh, planning to, to take Jota time or something very similar in a later JDK. My guess is at that point, uh, we would basically uh, provide support for it directly in GWT. Um, the question about uh, uh, Chrome uh, speed, uh, the, the basic, uh, problem is there's an object identity inside uh, the browser. So like if, if you pass an object in JavaScript to uh, Java, the same object twice, Chrome actually gives the plugin two different NPAPI objects. And so in order for us to make that work so it actually preserves identity, we actually have to put a, an attribute on every object that goes over to Java which means we have to go back across to V8 to look up that attribute, and so that slows it down. Uh, there's an also an object identity, identity problem going the other direction, which we actually can't work around, uh, but it, it turns out that it only matters in a, a few cases. Um, so that's the basic uh, uh, performance issue. There's, uh, you know, there's been a couple of bugs open on Chrome for a while, and uh, my understanding, the, the guy who's worked with them isn't here, but my understanding is that they don't really want to spend much effort on fixing NP API because it's on its way out being replaced by uh, Pepper. And, and so uh, they'd rather spend the effort on making sure it worked properly in the new API. But <clears throat> we, have, um, we have a couple of teams internally um, that uh, are really focusing on Chrome and apps that work on Chrome. And so while John is right that they're, you know, they are looking towards Pepper as the future, uh, MPA API is here and it's, it's now. And so there are um, a couple of teams that are feeling the same pain internally. Um, and you know, not to mention like the fact that it works faster on Firefox than it does to Chrome, I, I personally don't like, but that's just me. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so uh, <clears throat> yes, we're actively looking into it. And as John, he did a great job describing the problem. It's not an easy one. Uh, patching Chrome is something we've, we, you know, we've done. We've made commits to, web, uh, to WebKit as well. But it's not a, just a quick fix problem. And, and so we're, yes, we're looking into it. And I, there's, it would be tough to give you a timeline on it right now, even if you had asked. Let me ask um, the audience a question about the data issue. Um, and I'm making no promises here at all, but I'm curious about the reaction. If we were to actually write a minimal GWT date object, something that would work client side and server side that we could emulate, um, efficiently um, uh, without providing every last bell and whistle, but that you could also use server side for that kind of convenience. Would that be well received or would that just be in the wrong direction? Okay, some applause and about one eighth of the hands went up. It's an interesting <laughs> signal, thank you. Um, hi, now. my name is Gary Miller from a startup called Sumwise based out of Sydney, Australia. Um, we're on the sandbox, come get Tim Tams. No one seems to want our Tim Tams. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the GWT team. Um, been a big fan, been using it since 1.3 and then quickly swapped to Trunk. Um, just a, a question, maybe, you know, it's something that I haven't seen around. Um, last year at IO, um, Headless Speed Tracer got mentioned. I'm interested in profiling, so the question extends into lightweight collections um, and um, then on to testing. So just what's the status? So um, the status is, okay, so I'll, I'll take the lightweight collections one. Um, so the status on lightweight collections is uh, we've, we've done a, a large amount of research on, you know, where, where are you actually seeing the increase in size 
and where do you see the increase in slowness, basically? So like, where do you get a, size, a code size bloat and where do you see slowness when you use them? And um, what we found out right now is that the, you really have to have the, the, a perfect storm of, of uh, basically uh, implementation practices to, to get the benefit of this. So like, for example, if you're using um, HashMap with and in across, your, across your application using hash map with strings and then some with just objects as IDs. Like, then you actually end up downloading a whole bunch of code that you don't actually want to use. Um, or if you use, I think it was hash sets versus hash maps. But the point is that you had to have exactly the right combination to, to shave off you know, a add, certain amount of code. Can I add one thing to that? Um, we're using um, Google Collections. Um, fantastic on Chrome, runs like a dog on Firefox. That You're talking about the Guava code runs badly on Firefox, but not on Chrome? Uh, well, it's, it's a profiling issue. So, you know, um, profiling is hard. Um, that's the one thing that I think it might be. Um, but profiling just takes so much time to set up and, and run and tear down and what that, that you, you kind of do it every now and again. Um, so, you know, um, speed trace, headless speed tracer would probably help with the profiling stuff on, on, on the Chrome side of things. I have no idea how you could integrate Firefox speed, um, uh, profiling into a continuous build. Um, you know, big app, you know. So. Yeah, I don't have, I, so in, far, in terms of Google collections and, and, and the slowness, of, I don't have an answer off the top of my head, but uh, we can go back and Specifically a profiling issue. I mean, just how best practices on profiling, where are we at with that type of stuff? Okay, offline. Yeah. <laughs> yes, hello, I'm DJ Jara. I'm <laughs> leading a, a team of 60 uh, Wix developers. So I have two questions. Uh, the first is about compilation time. Uh, so we are build, building very big application with Wix now. So each time uh, my developers uh, lose one minute in front of the screen, at the end of the day is 60 minutes. So uh, it's a lot of time for us. So will you work on improving the completion time? And the second question is about uh, the channel API from Google App Engine. So will you provide a wrapper for this API? Could you repeat the second question? Uh, there is a, a channel API in, in the Google App Engine, and will you provide a, a wrapper, a good wrapper for it? Um, for the compile speed question, I think um, we answered that already. Um, we're trying to make it faster, and we'll keep making it faster. Um, there are very big teams inside of Google, too, and they all know our phone numbers, so. Well, I, I, I kind of a, I have a, a question about that. So um, we, we prioritize with making dev mode faster, and then making compilers faster, the com compilation faster, because we think that the, we think that the, the uh, the most used way, the, the, the way people usually use GWT is by simply using dev mode. So you run it and then you do a refresh in the browser. Is that not the case with your team? Are you guys actually doing compiles each time? In fact, we use uh, continuous integrations. And if e each time people commit some change, uh, you have to, uh, to start a, a compilation. And, and uh, if it's a big project, it it's takes a lot of time. So if you, see, if you end up seeing errors in the continuous integration, you might you might be off by a few commits or tens of commits or something like that. Is that, is that your point? Like you, you see a build breakage and you have to go back and figure out where it happened because it might take hours to do your compile. Okay. That, that's a very good point. Um, yeah, we are, we are working on it and we do get both messages a lot. Dev mode needs to be faster. The compiler needs to be faster. The compiler is harder because it has um, conflicting goals. Um, we're trying to squeeze your binary down as tight as we can, and that takes more time. And at the same time, you want the compiler to run faster for obvious reasons, and uh, um, there are trade-offs. Um, the other question you asked was about um, the App Engine dev channel. Um, channel API. The, yes, channel, not dev channel. The word channel was involved. Um, we're not doing um, anything specific to that at the moment. Um, there are examples of um, good code exposing that and using it. it. I don't think it's terribly hard to roll your own. The example I'm thinking of, did that ship as part of the App Engine demo? Um, The, from the audience, Gary tells us that uh, last year's I.O. had a demo involving Go Go Dance Dance Robot. Go -Go Dance Dance Robot. Um, the code for that used channel. Um, it is oh. on, it is, uh, 
Uh, oh, it's Toby. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> would, would, you, would you raise a specification of this API? Because uh, some, some people want, for example, build a Java wrapper for this API. In, we should. We should. We, um, it's not on the list at the moment, but it should be there. Um, so clearly, we should get to it. Um, in the meantime, I would look up uh, Toby's demo and extract from that. And I expect he will have uh, put good code around it. We, we, we did have um, some internal teams looking into it, too. They were doing a. Uh, uh, kind of an experiment with uh, a collaborative application using GWT. Uh, and, and they, I mean, we, we love App Engine, we really do. Um, and they, they used um, the um, um, browser channel to actually do it. And they weren't completely sold on it. It was time to pull the trigger on, on creating the APIs around it. Now, this was arguably five months ago. So they, what they were doing is they, weren't, they were seeing a little bit of latency in the updates, or they might miss an update here and there. Um, which uh, pushed them to go a different route. So maybe it's in, in our best interest to follow up with them too is, and see like, you know, has the API solidified? Does it feel solid? You know, is it time to actually bump that up in priority to say, you know, yeah, instead of doing index DB support for HTML5, let's go do browser channel, right? Because it, it just makes sense. Uh, some people were also looking at the idea of having an abstraction that would work on either browser channel or WebSockets. Right. Uh, so it'd be one common API to use with both. Uh, one question about your compilation speed. Are you compiling just one permutation or all the permutations? Okay. The answer was one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Brett Conley. I work for Intuit out of Athens, Georgia. And my, the primary product that I'll work on is an administrative platform built around the LifeRay portal. And I've seen a ton of questions on the GWT developer forums on portlet support. Um, we currently use GWT Dispatch to make our RPC requests up to our um, portlet resource handlers. And, uh, and it works fine, but there are some issues with maintainability when it comes to upgrading GWT. And um, there are some core pieces that we are missing. Is there any plans to actually bring in portal support, portlet development support into GWT? Yeah. So we don't really have a stock answer to that exact question, so I'm just going to tell you my opinion about it, which is that you, know, you have to sort of pick a level of, of how much out-of-the-box functionality do you want to provide when you do something like GWT. And you know, if we go too high, then it becomes sort of a special purpose thing, and it might not be, it might be good for you, but not as good for some other people. And so we sort of don't want to go that high. We're just like, it's great as long as all you want to do is you know, portlets or portals. Um, but then if you go too low level, then it doesn't provide quite enough functionality out of the box. We try to strike a sweet spot so that it, you know, it's possible to kind of get a lot of value out of the box for there to be other projects that can spring up that sort of you can use a third party um, library or framework based on GWT. We've seen that work well in other sort of subject areas on top of GWT, uh, open source projects that you know, take advantage of it um, and that raise the level of use GWT as the base, plus that project as sort of a layer on top. Uh, and so for something as specific as portals and portlet support, it feels to me like it's, that's a little bit higher level than we would tend to do out of the box. So um, I guess I would just maybe turn the question around to the audience and say, are you guys aware of any good projects that, that try to address this? And whether if there is, that you, it'd be good for you to know. If there's not, then that might be an opportunity for someone to start a project of that sort. Is anybody, anybody else doing a, wanting portal type support, portlets? So it's a really tough call to, you know, to know exactly what to do. Um, it's, it's easy for us, though, to say, it should be easy to just build a layer yourself or, you know, or just use iframes or you know, something right. like that. Of course, I know that's not, right. that may we, not be a very satisfying answer, though. And we, we build a framework that actually works and works really well. But like I said, there are a couple limitations in maintaining during upgrades is hard. Right. Um, so and having it in the core would be great, but we're fine now. So. So I wanted to say, I wanted to just describe how we think about it so you'll get a better feel for sort of what you probably can bank on us doing right. versus, you know, you can say it's probably less likely that we would do it. Right. So if there are specific lower level 
plumbing pieces that would be needed for you to build your own support. That's something that we probably would do. So code splitting, for example, is the kind of thing. It's kind of high level, but it's also kind of low level and generic. Right. So well, other I'm, things like that, you know, might might be. Uh, let us let us know if you think. Okay. Of those. Well, I appreciate the answer. Have, have you given any thought to open sourcing your platform? Uh, I've thought about it, but within our our company, it's there's political things that have to go into contributing to open source that so makes it difficult. So now you can say the quit team, so they didn't have any plans to do it. So. Right. So we do it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Uh, my name is Jay Gindon. I'm with Aptio. We do uh, cost transparency for large IT organizations. So, you know, when you're talking about enterprise software, that's that's really that's that's what we are. Um, but along those same lines, enterprises tend to use IE more than anything else. Um, you know, and unfortunately, some of them are even still stuck on IE6. And so, my question is kind of a follow-up on the earlier question. You know, what plans do you guys have? Speed Tracer is great and it helps, but you know, when we get into a real issue, it often turns out that you know, the tools that are available for Chrome are great, but they don't actually give you any insight into what's happening for IE. Uh, so do you guys have any thoughts or plans to you know, help, uh, help out, even though you know, it's kind of competitors, uh, but you know, it's really it's us who who are using GWT to build the apps for our customers. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> so there's sometimes there are um, I'll be honest about this. There are some some legal constraints that we have with with doing um, certain products that would work with Microsoft. But that said, um, we have found that Microsoft actually has a, a pretty good set of debugging tools um, that you can use alongside their browsers. Um, that will like so for example, I, th I think speed tracer is great and it, when it comes to profiling It's one of the best um, But Chrome dev tools are really good and firebugs really good and Microsoft has their own versions too that we've, we've actually used I know Joel I've seen it running on Joel's machine quite a few yeah, times. Their, their dev tools have gotten better, but they still kind of suck <laughs> <laughs> You know in turn just like if yeah. you look at speed tracer, it's very detailed and tells you hey you're spending like you know half a second rendering this widget. And okay, you know, you can usually extrapolate and say, well, if I can make it better in Chrome, it's gonna be better in IE, but just because it's really good in Chrome doesn't mean that it's also really good in IE, and so you just have no visibility, right? I mean, you just, the, the profiler that's in the Microsoft Dev Tools just doesn't give you a whole lot, and you know, what we found was there were times where it just would hang and just do nothing and basically your only recourse at that point was to go kill the browser. And, and you saw, I mean, it, hanging in terms of you wouldn't actually be able to hit a breakpoint inside your, like if you ran it in dev mode for instance. Yeah, their, their dev tools would just basically wind up hanging the browser. You just couldn't get any information out of it. That, that is unfortunate. So if there's hooks or anything that you can put into GWT, which it sounds like maybe the, the um, other tracer tool you were talking about a few minutes ago might you know, go some distance towards helping. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. You could, uh, so the format for, um, the format for what Speed Tracer can consume um, is out there for the public to see. And so you, you could theoretically drop um, traces out of your application. I mean, this is not a trivial thing to do, but it's possible that you could actually drop traces out of your application that could be consumed by Speed Tracer. All right. Yeah, actually, that, that you raise a great point. I was going to ask this. Um, I was going to ask this based on your question. So, if I can ask everybody else here a question, is um, so I, I've heard over the past few days that um, you know there still are a lot of IE users. I've heard quite a bit that IE six is going away, and you're seeing a lot of your potentially your end users using IE eight. But it still doesn't totally help us out because I want. I'd love to see people get to IE nine, which just starts to give us the ability to really push the open web. But um, how many folks are still having to support IE six? And go ahead, we'll ask one at a time. So. Okay, that's that's down from last year, um, and then and then, how many? Oh, it's a two-part question. How many people have actually tried to get either their company or their end users to use Chrome Frame? How many have had success? Okay. All right. If you have any, um, yeah, we'd we'd love to hear back if you if you, you to, with the stories on on how this works. We we like to pitch it, but it's a t it's still a tough thing to do because if you get past, I'll be honest, if you get past the um, if you can get them to start thinking about it, as soon as you say we have to install a plugin to run the application, they kind of freak out a little bit. 
So my question is about uh, optimizations that the compiler could potentially do. Um, I'm working on a file size constrained uh, device, so the ultimate generated code needs to be as small as possible. So permutations kind of <laughs> hinder that when you get into seven or eight different languages and three or four browsers. So uh, the, the other thing I wondered about is I'm, I'm also only using the client side functionality. So having you know, interface compatible code for Java is a little overkill on the JavaScript side. Um, so I, I wonder if there was any plans to do kind of micro optimization at that point or to file system type optimization. I don't think there's anything happening right this second. I mean, the optimizations we're doing, we're talking more about uh, dev mode and, and compilations. I, I would suggest in, um, uh, that there, there was a talk given last year by Ray Cromwell that you can find on YouTube um, that, that details just about, it's called Faster Apps Faster, and details just about every possible compiler flag you can throw at the GDPT compiler to reduce file sizes or to reduce um, your overall uh, uh, compilation artifacts and as well as comp compilation time. Okay. So that might be a good start. Yep. And that's what I have to say. I just want to add a couple things. Uh, what, well, what kind of device are you talking about? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure say. that I can say at this okay, moment. Okay. But <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking, I'm, I'm looking to get our, our client down to, say, five megs. Okay. And, and how big is it now? Um, right now, I, I, I only have a few pages, and I'm already up to about three or four. Are you, is that obfuscated or? Yes. So it, it, something sounds weird. Um, <laughs> well, I've got 30 permutations, so. Oh, oh, you're talking about not per permutation. Not per You're talking about the. I'm talking overall. Okay. Okay. You don't have, you have limited, it's not like you have limited. It's limited disk space, space right. so to speak. Limited, or, limited or disk flash space. or whatever. Okay. Correct. So uh, for that, I would say. Do you, do you actually need those permutations? Are, those, are you just getting those permutations out of the box is one question. No, I, I've actually trimmed it down to the necessary languages that we, we need to support. Um, now, I, I have seen that you can't have a monolithic kind of internationalization happening, but that, that, that seemed kind of overkill. Well, you, you can, but it, so there's this idea of soft permutations, right? And that, that's, I think that's one. Are you aware of that idea? Soft no. Soft permutations, okay. Is that, do we have some good threads on that, on the groups about soft permutations? I'm trying to give them a reference for, because nobody will remember anything we say right in a second, there's probably. There's a wiki page for it. So it's there's a recorded. page for it? There's a wiki page for soft permutations. So what you can do is basically say, uh, compile it all into one JavaScript file, and then do a runtime decision. So every right. .create call right now, or not every, but typically, it, that's what, where the code fans out. It's where the universe splits into different JavaScript compilations, mm -hmm. but uh, soft permutations collapses it so that it's actually a runtime decision. It actually stays inside the same JavaScript file. However, um, there's still a there is going to be ultimately be some limit as to how small you could make it even best case, but you do avoid some duplication of like the UI code wouldn't get repeated in each permutation. With soft permutations, you have the UI code plus the sum of all the additional code for each of the localized versions. Okay, as I recall, I, I read something about that, and you, you lose, like, number formatting or currency formatting uh, on the, the locale level. You, you, got, you might want to say something about that. So, uh, for the I18N side of it, there's runtime locales, which lets you, it, it doesn't get you different translations, but it gets you uh, runtime switching between uh, country-specific uh, formats. So, you can have just a Spanish uh, translation, and then you still get uh, all the different date time formats, currencies, et cetera, for each different country that you're using. Uh, the, the soft permutations can be used on top of that. I'm not sure how well that's gonna work for you. Uh, but the, uh, if, if you have uh, just one browser, you should be able to get it down to only the uh, uh, international, uh, the different languages for your permutations. Is that what you already have done? Uh, we're, we're actually supporting four browsers at the moment, or okay. three browsers at the moment, so. Uh, yeah, most things in GWT, uh, we, we felt like the disk space is cheap, and so if we can make things run faster by using more space on the server, that's a good thing to do. Uh, 
you can turn some of that off, like for example, inlining uh, uh, images and things like that. Uh, Which, yeah, th th I guess the, the sort of roll up uh, thought there is look at a compile report. Are you familiar with how to do yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. Look at the compile report, consider software mutations, um, and I think you, you, sh you should and double check how, the, how your resources are getting inlined. Maybe there's something is happening and they're, if they're using data URLs, they're, get, they're getting inlined into the script and then that's getting duplicated across permutations. That can get really big. Um, so th the answer is probably already there in your data. Do you, do you have like a million plus lines of Java source code? Getting up there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, you should, be able to, you should be able to work this out. It's just a matter of, you know, cleverly uh, arranging the switches and, and compile settings probably. Okay. So, Thank you. What, yeah. One more quick thing before I go. Uh, how many of you all hang out in the uh, IRC channel? Any of you? I think there's, <laughs> I think you can always find um, Kelly Norton there actually. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 can, I, I was I just curious. I don't know how many of the people that hang out there were actually GWT developers. So. Yeah. If there's, I, a, not, there's a K Norton. Not too many of us. One or two people pop in every now and then. Um, we are starting to pay more attention to Stack Overflow these days. Uh, yep. Thank you. So we've got. Uh, Three minutes and 16 seconds and four questions. Let's see how fast we can do this. Uh, quick question. <laughs> My name is Spencer Gibb. I work for the LDS Church. Um, question about uh, support for custom UI binder XML handlers. Yes. Um, we still don't have any um, plans to open up the, uh, the UI binder custom parser API um, just for fear of the support nightmare. Um, however, some recent changes that you might not be aware of um, have dramatically reduced the need for that. Have you found the UI child annotation? Hmm. So um, UI child um, lets you annotate a method on a widget to be called for um, child widgets. Um, okay. And so it used to be that if you wanted to have um, widgets inside your widget, you had to implement the has children interface you now have much, much more control over that. You can decorate as many um, methods as you want to accept children of specific types. You can put limits onto how many of them you will actually accept um, and that kind of a thing. Okay. So the combination of that and um, the UI constructor and UI factory annotations that give you some control over how things get created and the existing um, um, bean parsing conventions of set property and so on. Um, I, internally, we've been finding a lot fewer people uh, asking us to write new custom parsers for them. I can't remember the last one that actually got written. Um, you, it doesn't help you uh, retrofit existing widgets, but if you are writing your own widgets, you've got a lot more control than you used to have. Great, thank you. We should probably document that. Hi, uh, I'm Chi Huang from Solium Capital. Uh, we let people exercise their stock options, view reports on their stock options, et cetera, all via GWT. So we've had a lot of success there. My question is uh, about direct eval RPC. Does it still have a future? And if not, uh, were there issues with that approach that resulted in it, in, that resulted in it being a dead end? Um, yeah, the guy who knows the most about that was smart and hid today. But, um, DERPC is all but deprecated. Really, we should just put the deprecated label on Hence it. Hence the DE in front of the RPC. <laughs> That's right. It is the DERPC. Um, it didn't live up to its promise. Um, the, we didn't get as dramatic an improvement as we expected, and that improvement is less, on, less and less as browsers get more and more modern. The code base is a nightmare to maintain. Um, the two big problems that it solves, the ability to serialize final fields, there is a patch that continues to be this close to fixing that problem um, for uh, regular GWT RPC. If you look at our right belt tracker, you'll see that it keeps getting woken up again as a particular person gets poked on the shoulder about it. It will land soon, I'm certain. Um, the other problem that it solved was... Um, Are you talking about the serialization? This, uh, the slow script problem. And I don't know that we really have a good answer for that yet. Um, yes. Um, the. I've been reminded that uh, part of the reason that we're less concerned about that is that we have in the meantime introduced an alternative RPC system, the request factory, um, which doesn't have any of these problems um, and is also um, uh, more opinionated than good RPC in how one should structure um, an RPC layer properly and keeps you out of a lot of the problems that good RPC leads you into with uh, ballooning code size as you serialize things you didn't mean to and that kind of a thing. Um, 
we don't have an explicit we don't have it explicitly on our roadmap to try to make those two RPC systems converge, but um, conversations like that are ongoing. But to the question you asked, DRPC not so supported. Can we do we have time for should we? Nope, we got to cut it. So we'll be hanging around. Uh, I know we have two more other questions. Please feel free to come say hi and ask us what. But um, I appreciate everybody coming out, and I hope this was beneficial. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.